Sometimes when you're creating a form, you don't want the user to be able to type in text. Rather, you might want them to pick from some preset options that you define. Let's say that our imaginary web app is targeted at people like you that are students of technology. We want to allow people to select from a predefined list of job roles. We're going to have a lot of job roles to choose from, so anytime that you have a list of options, that's longer than, say, four or five things, it's best to go with a select menu because it saves space. So let's take a look at that in code. So let's scroll down here, and just under the biography, we'll make some space, and let's first type a label. And I'll say this is a label for job. And inside of this label, I'll say job role. And then after that, I'll type a select element and I'll give it an ID of job because we want that to match the label. I'll give it a name of user job. And then I'll close the select element. Now by itself, the select element won't do anything this form element actually needs additional elements inside of it, exactly like an unordered list element. The elements we put inside are called option elements. So let's type up some options to choose from. So first, type the option element, and I'll give it a value of front end developer. And then inside of the two option tags, I'll type that out. I'll say front end developer. And I'll just copy and paste this a few times because we're just going to change the values here. So instead of front end developer, let's say something like PHP developer. And then we'll say Python developer. And we can change these here as well. So we'll say PHP developer and Python developer. And I've typed a few options here, and we're going to type several more, but you've probably noticed that I'm using an attribute called value. Now, normally, when you submit a form to server-side code, each form element has an associated value. For text inputs and text areas, that value is whatever the user types into the field. However, since we're creating these predefined options, we need to specify what the value should look like when it's submitted. So let's type up several more options. So I'll just paste that a few more times. And let's say Rails developer. And we'll come back and change all of the descriptions between the option tags. So we'll say Rails developer. We'll say web designer, and let's add another one. We'll say WordPress developer, and I want to add a few mobile roles here. So we'll say Android developer, iOS developer, and then mobile designer. And then let's add two more for business, and we'll say business owner and freelancer. So now we need to change all of the descriptions between here. So for Rails developer, we'll say Rails developer. For web designer, we'll say web designer. We'll do WordPress, Android, iOS, and then mobile designer, and then business owner, and then finally freelancer. So we'll save that out, switch over to our form and refresh, and if we scroll down here, you can see that we now have this job role label along with the select menu that we just created. And this is a good start, 
but this list is a little bit difficult to read quickly. We can organize our list into logical groups with the opt group element. So let's try to organize this list. We'll switch back. And first, I'm going to add an opt group element. And I'll use the label attribute, not the label element. And we'll say web. So this will have an associated closing tag. And we want to wrap all of the web job roles. So let's do that. Then we'll indent all of these. We want another opt group. And this time the label will be mobile. And we'll wrap all of the mobile job roles. And then indent these. And then finally, we'll have an opt group for business. So let's close that and then indent both of these. There we go. So now if I save that out and switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that the label attribute we used on our opt group or option groups has been applied here. However, those option groups are not selectable. We just have the various options grouped underneath each opt group. That's about it for the select element. Next, we'll learn about radio buttons.